grace to you and peace from God, our creator, the love at our beginning and without end in our midst and within us. Welcome to this time and to this place of worship. I'm the Reverend Nicole Uzans. It's so good to be with you here in the Easter season. This is a season of 50 days of celebration, 50 days of deepening our connection with the risen Christ. We gather in this place and we take a moment to be mindful of all the gifts, the gift of the land and of those who have stewarded it for generations, for the first peoples of this place, the Mi'kmaq people who know this as Mi'kma'ki. We give thanks for the generations of people who have come in peace and for those who have crafted a better life even in times of discord and conflict. We recognize that these lands are covered by treaties of peace and friendship. We are all treaty people. May we endeavor to live as such with one another and with all creation. Our service today is a service of the word and of music. In your blue hymn book, our opening hymn is number 231.
Turning now to our bulletin, I invite you to join in our opening responses. <coughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us praise our God. Who has given us life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Let us rejoice then even in our distress. We shall be O oh God, you have claimed us as your own. And called us from our darkness into the light of your day. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the shadows and brought us into the loving reign of the risen Christ. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise your, you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. And as we prepare to hear the words of scripture, let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you raised Christ from the dead and glorified him at your right hand. Let the words of scripture burn within our hearts and open our minds to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Amen. You may be seated. And just as Mary is coming forward, I'm going to offer a word of introduction to this, uh, this reading so that you know what's going on here in the book of Acts. So we're early on in the book, and uh, the apostles are gathered in the temple at Jerusalem. Just before this reading, Peter and John have come across a man who is begging. He has been lame all of his life. And, uh, and at their word, he rises to his feet and starts to walk. And so there's a lot of consternation about this healing miracle. And what we hear now is Peter's response to the crowds. A reading from the book of Acts. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of Abra Abraham, of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One, and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You are most, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful and will hear me when I call.
Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our gradual hymn is number 216, and following the hymn, we remain standing for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? <laughs> they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, my friends, so much good can come from sharing a meal together. Just a short time ago, we wrapped up our Lenten series here at St. John's with a session on communion and Eucharist. But before we got to any of the, the course content, if you will, we spent a good while sharing stories of significant meals that we have enjoyed in our lives. These meals were significant, not because of the, the menu or the recipes, but because of the, communi the community that was gathered for those meals, or because of the particular moment in our lives that we were marking, or perhaps because of something else about the experience that imprinted itself upon us and left us with a profound memory. Some of the short stories we shared were of big elaborate meals, whether fancy or just chaotic, some of the stories were of simple, everyday meals at which love was as tangibly present as the food that was shared. These stories, frankly, tumbled out of us because as soon as one person shared a memory, it sparked someone else to remember an experience of their own or to nod in recognition. Quite simply, some of the most beautiful moments in our lives happen when we eat together with others. That is universally true for human beings. And it is particularly true for Christians, for followers of Jesus. In his gospel, Luke includes only two stories of encounter with the risen Christ. And both of those stories involve a meal. The first is the road to Emmaus story in which two people walk down the road bereft after the death of Jesus. They're joined by a third companion who at the end of the day sits down to table with them and in the breaking of bread together, they recognize him to be Jesus. They're risen alive with them in flesh and blood. The second story is the one we heard here today. The two Emmaus pilgrims have rushed back to tell the others what they have experienced. And while they are still talking, Jesus himself comes and stands amongst them, and he's still hungry. After assuring the disciples that he is no ghost, Jesus asks them for something to eat, and they give him a piece of broiled fish. They share a meal together that none of them will forget. This inclusion of meals in the resurrection accounts tells us something about what was important to the early church. It tells us something about what they came to understand about God after the resurrection. First of all, Jesus taking and eating of a piece of fish says that matter matters. By eating with the disciples, Jesus shows himself to be unmistakably physical and real because you can't share food with a ghost. Now, why is that important? Well, many in the ancient world and indeed today thought of God as residing on some superior spiritual plane, you know, like God's way out there somewhere and we're down here. But Jesus shows himself again and again to be fully human, incarnate, made of the same stuff as we are, even as he shows himself to be so wonderfully filled with the divine. He is one of us, yet from the heart of God. And so Jesus is the affirmation that God loves this world and is thoroughly a part of it. By taking material form, God in Christ declares that physical creation is deeply, is profoundly,
profoundly good. We celebrate this, first of all, at Christmas, when Christ is born, but we celebrate it again at Easter, when Christ is risen, flesh and bone, to be amongst us. Wow, this, this is God's chosen home, here amongst us, as one of us. That was a radical proposition in the ancient world, and it still is today. <coughs> How many of us really walk through this world as if this is the chosen realm of the greatest love in the universe. And yet, this is the message of Easter. God will stop at nothing to be here in the physical body of Jesus and in the physical realities of hunger and death and new life here in this world. God loves this world so much. And there's more. By doing one impossible thing, physically raising Jesus from the dead, God hints that there are many more impossible things to come. I think the disciples have the right reaction to encountering the risen Christ. Luke says that in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, which is about as good a description of faith as I have ever heard. Joy, disbelief, and wonder describe the experience of faith in something bigger than ourselves. Joy, disbelief, and wonder, together they add up to sheer amazement or astonishment. And isn't that what it's like? When we realize that there is more at work in our lives and in our world than we ever imagined, joy and disbelief and wonder are absolutely the proper responses. They open us up to be more than we thought we could be in a world that is more than we thought it could be. So into this charged moment of astonishment, here in the story, Jesus speaks a very clear word of instruction to the disciples. He asks, have you anything here to eat? He calls the astonished disciples into a mission that is still with us today. The mission is this, pay attention to the hungers of the people who are right in front of you. Pay attention to the hungers of the people who are right in front of you. In that way, you will become part of the amazing and seemingly impossible things that God is doing in this world. <laughs> Pay attention to those hungers because so much happens when people share a meal together. And here's the good news. We have opportunities to do this right here and now. I look out at you and I, well, I, I see people who know the nearness of God in your prayer lives and in the shaping of your souls. I look out and I also see people who really care about the needs of our community, both here and beyond the walls of this building. I see people who have the will to do something to satisfy others' hunger. We are people of God who will let God love the world through the prayers we pray and through the actions we take. And for me, that is a great sign of hope. I want to share with you one actual and practical way that this is taking shape through the work of your wardens and council here at St. John's. Uh, for some time, we have been nurturing a relationship with the Front Street Community Oven, and we now have opportunity to deepen that relationship. Now, the oven, if you're not familiar with it, is a structure. It's an outdoor oven there in Roby Tufts Park down by the library where people can bake pizzas and bread and all manner of delicious thing. 
the oven is also a gathering place in our community. Throughout the summer, the oven hosts weekly cookouts where people from, frankly, all walks of life come together to cook side by side and to share food at common tables. Oh, have I mentioned? So much good can come from sharing meals together. At the oven, people understand that we are all connected. That's the mantra of the organization. People understand that social isolation is also a hunger and that it can be satisfied when belonging is found at the table we share. So, this is where it gets exciting. The executive director of the Front Street Community Oven approached us at St. John's to talk about deepening the relationship that has already begun between us. Already, we have some crossover of volunteers and members. Some of the people here are fire masters at the oven. We've already extended our space here at St. John's for meetings of the oven volunteers. And a couple of the folks I've, I've met down there have been guests at our dinner and a guest events where, uh, where students connect with other young adults. So how can we deepen this connection? One avenue that we are exploring is funding. As a charitable organization, St. John's can access foundation funding to support shared projects between ourselves and the oven and the wider community until the oven organization gets on its feet and has its own charitable number. That's a really practical consideration. By raising the profile of the community oven here in our church, I can also imagine us being a bigger part of the fire master team or the other volunteer roles that make the oven work. So I'm pretty excited about all of this. Such a partnership is, it's a physical manifestation of our commitment to building up community here in Wolfville, reducing isolation even as bellies are fed. We're still working out the details, so I thank you for your trust in the wardens and the rector and the council to do that. And we welcome your questions. Please do speak to any of us because I really want you to feel like you're a part of something here. Part of a, a particular effort to address the hungers that are here in the people who are right in front of us. Working with a partner organization like The Oven is not just a nice thing to do. It is a reflection of our resurrection hope. We look to the needs of the world because that's what God did in sending Jesus to this world. We act in the face of real hungers because that's what Christ did in our midst and he calls his disciples to do the same. We stand in astonishment at all that God has done and we act forward with confidence and purpose because we are empowered by the love known in Christ that God has for all people. Such love as God has may appear in the raising of the dead. It may also appear in the sharing of a simple meal. As people of faith in the risen Christ, who appeared to his followers with both peace and hunger, we say yes, and we take our part in the risen life of all God's beloved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise. All who desire to affirm and to deepen a Christian faith are invited to say together with me, we believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life and every life, of sun and moon, 
of water and earth. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. Let's sing together hymn number 338, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. of the people, you're welcome to be seated or to kneel.
our response today after God of Easter, we will respond with, hear our prayer. Celebrating the victory over, of love over death, we offer prayers to God. God, who comes in bread, you sustain life through the most basic foods. Show us your risen presence in the, in the basics of life. Make our hearts burn within us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in wine, you enriched life in the community and celebration. Show us how to live as a community, even as we struggle with our current reality. Make our hearts burn within us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in story, you remind us who we are through familiar words and through unfamiliar drama of our own lives, open our hearts to the story you're telling us, the story of which we are part, the story you are composing for the sake of creation. Make our hearts burn within us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in sadness, your presence is promised most profoundly when we are hurting when we are overwhelmed, when we see no way through. Reassure us that you do walk with us in our most difficult days. Give us faith when we lose hope. Make our hearts burn within us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. For our students, God who helps us study Help our students feel your unconditional love. Help them feel safe as they travel and return to us next year. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God, who comes in illness, we remember those who are sick, those whose health is compromised, those who are facing death. We also remember those who are serving them in their pain and isolation. In our prayers, we especially remember those whose names are listed in our bulletin. May we all support each other as we embrace the ministry of healing to which you call us. Make our hearts burn within us. God of Easter, the flowers in the church are given in the memory of Victor C. Harris from the family. God of Easter, hear our prayer. In the cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of New Zealand and Polynesia, along with the parishes of Eastern Passage, Nova Scotia. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in the ordinary, free us from looking for you only in the special or the life extraordinary. Free us from the encounter you every day. Make our hearts burn within us, even now. God of Easter. Let us gather our prayers and the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As the gifts offered for the work of the church are brought forward, our musicians give us this gift of music.
please rise. Together we pray. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come of you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, I am with you always. And so may, the, may God the creator bless you. May God the son walk with you. May God the spirit lead your lives with love this day and evermore. Amen. You may be seated. Well, special thanks to our musicians today. What a treat to have four hands on the piano and a guest conductor and this opportunity for people to grow in their skills. I kind of feel like that deserves a round of applause, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, many of our musicians are heading into a very busy and exciting time. They're, um, here in town and, uh, and also in Lunenburg offering concerts later this week. Uh, Lunenburg on Friday, but uh, here on Saturday, seven o'clock at Denton Hall is the, um, the Acadia University Singers Singing in Flanders Fields concert. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to make, make it to that. Um, this is their last stop before going to Europe with the, uh, with the music. I think many of the announcements there you've, uh, you've seen in previous weeks, um, but I will flag that the ACW meets tomorrow, uh, so you can come bring your lunch at noon. Coffee and tea will be provided. Um, and um, and there's w we'll start seeing a few more notices about um, the yard sale. So it's spring cleaning season. Uh, if you've got stuff that you no longer need, but someone else might, um, please do hold it aside for the, the June 15th sale. Also coming up this week, there's a community group that's organizing a vigil for Palestinian lives at Clock Park Sunday afternoon from 2 to 4 p.m. Representatives from your interchurch council will be offering prayers at that vigil, prayers for the peace of all people. Um, I see that Vicky's at the door, so yeah, let's hear from, from you. Good morning. I've just been handed an um, announcement that came through the ACW, so I don't know much about it, but um, it's from the Wolfram Nursing Home, and they have a tea on Thursday, April 18th, happening at 2 p.m. It does say in appreciation for all you do, so it could be a thank you to volunteers in the community. That's my guess and assumption. They were looking for an RSVP by April 9th, which has passed, but I'm sure if you wanted to go and contact them, you'd probably be more than welcome. Um, it is through their rec department and their phone number um, is on this poster, which I can put at the back door. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Um, and a Warden is offering a word about one of the building projects underway. So as I mentioned to you last week, and as you may have seen in a midweek email, the Parish Council has approved a plan to illuminate these three windows, uh, which are not well illuminated since the construction of the sunroom on the other side. And the goal is to put light panels behind each one of those windows so that we might see the beauty and the colors shine through once more as they were intended to be. This plan is being fully supported by an, 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 excuse me, an anonymous uh, donor, and we anticipate it will start soon and be finished up by the summertime. If you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to speak to either myself or Karen or any member of your parish council. Thanks. Great. 
Is there anything else that should come to the attention of the community? Great. Well, then we uh, sing together our closing hymn, number 210. Let us go forth rejoicing in the risen Lord. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.